little hand says it's time to rock and roll. Everybody freeze! Nobody move! Keep your hands up and your eyes down! I'll tell her, back, back away from the cows! Hands on your head now! Everybody up and put your desk on the floor! Welcome to Kermit Uncut. Very pleased to be joined by Greg Proops. Greg, thank you for coming on the program. We're backstage at the Soho Theatre where you're about to do a show, but I wanted to grab you because it's the summer, and we talked a couple of years ago here on Kermit Uncut about how much I love Point Break, mm. which at that point you couldn't get hold of to show theatrically because they were making the ridiculous remakes and they'd taken it out of circulation. You and I were just talking, and you said Point Break is one of the films that you consider perhaps to be a guilty pleasure. You love it. I do. It's, Tell me why you like it. Well, uh, one, it's a great action film. The set pieces in it are like, v very few movies have the kind of impetus those set pieces have. The, the skydiving sequence, uh, mm -hmm. the surfing at night sequence, yeah, the chase yeah. where they're wearing the presence mask and he sets the gasoline on fire at the petrol station and everything. Aside from that, it, what makes me love it more than anything is, it's a romance ostensibly with Keanu Reeves and Maury Petty, but the real relationship in the movie is them. Mm -hmm. It's Patrick Swayze and Keanu Reeves. They love each other. The awkward meeting when they first yeah. meet, and he defends him in a fight like, like he was a girl yeah. to be horribly sexist about this. <laughs> and then as their relationship develops and he gets him to do more and more extreme things, then when he finds out he's an FBI agent, he doesn't reject him. Yeah. He brings him into the gang. Then at the end, they marry each other when they put the bracelets on. And then they have he lets him go because he says, let me go and I'll die or whatever. And yeah. spoiler alert. And Keanu lets him go. They know. It's their divorce or yeah. whatever. So the point of that movie uh, is that Patrick Swayze has a huge influence on our hero, the FBI agent yeah. Johnny Utah. So when he says to him when they meet at the end and he goes, are you still surfing? And Johnny Utah goes, every day. And you're like, <laughs> now who's in love in this movie? It is the greatest... They have male sex, which in a movie is fighting. Yeah. Uh, when they jump out of the plane together, yeah. that, that's, uh, uh, you know, like the consummation of their... It's an extraordinary sequence. Yeah. Even now, I still I remember the first time seeing... Uh, how are they doing it? How do they actually do that? Yeah. It's a great sequence. It's amazing. And uh, Gary Busey, you know, as the older brother who's mm -hmm. advising him against the relationship with, with the love affair that he's having with Pat Swayze. And also, it's important that Gary Busey had played Buddy Holly, so he get that kind of the, the, the older father with one foot in the past yeah. thing, because because Boosie carries so much baggage with him. Right, oh, totally. And um, and he does his usual over the top, you know. Yeah. You're giving me squat! Yeah. Squat! <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I love it. And uh, and as we briefly discussed, it has the worst soundtrack of any major action film. Yeah, which is a weird thing. There's isn't no good it? songs in it. But everything else about the film is so yeah. good. And why such a bad soundtrack? And it's early 90s, so you thought it would have been like, uh, uh, they could have put some grunge in it. <laughs> <laughs> The only good song in it is If Six Were Nine by Jimi Hendrix when they're walking to the party at the beginning. And that song really plays. The last song in the movie when it, you know, uh, like they do the Matrix drum drop bang out into the credits yeah. is a, a song by Rat. And they're like, <laughs> you know, wow. Did you have no money? How come you couldn't get uh, Welcome to the Jungle? Or, or You know what I mean? That movie's crying out for a Guns N' Roses soundtrack. Can you remember where you first saw it? On telly, and I think my wife made me watch it. And then I was on tour in England uh, with my tour manager, whose name was Mark Rainbow. We were in a hotel room in like Newbury or something, and it was on. And he was like, he's a tall drill singer. Like, yeah. Mark Rainbow jump off a cliff, climb up a mountain, like he's crazy. And he'd never seen it. And I made him watch it, and he was like, this is the best movie I've ever seen, man. Like, he loved it, right? So, here you go. Hey. Ever done this before? No. Nope. But I've seen it on TV. 100% pure adrenaline. Other guys snort for it, jab a vein for it, and all you gotta do is jump. It's the greatest dude movie of all time that women love because the two male leads are gorgeous in it. And, uh, and they're really uh, women-friendly actors. All women, I'm generalizing horribly here, love Keanu Reeves. He's kind of got that... Everyone loves Keanu He's got that puppy dog thing mixed with Gregory Peck. Like, he's got that integrity, but he's also playful. And then Pat Swayze was just Pat Swayze. He's like a great action star, you know. I love the fact that you love Point Break. I'm going to ask you to do one final thing before you go. When I was making The Fear of God, the documentary about The Exorcist, in 1998, I spent some time with you, and there was one evening in which you basically did the whole of The Exorcist <laughs> from beginning to end. <laughs> I'm not going to ask you to do that, but I'm just going to ask you to leave us with just a little burst of All right. of your exorcist. The power of the Lord compels you. The power of the <laughs> I can't do the spider walk. <laughs> Craig, thank you. Thanks, Mark. Twenty-seven banks in three years. In and out in ninety seconds. No one ever gets shot. 
What are we talking about here? We're talking about solid professionals. 